Welcome aboard to NJ.com's uh, football chat here, joined by, as we are every week here, the McCourty twins. Jason McCourty, Devin McCourty's former Rutgers players, now both in the NFL, and kind enough to give us a few minutes here on this Thanksgiving week. Talk about Rutgers football, talk about NFL. Guys, how are you today? Jason? I'm doing good. I can't complain. How about you, Devin? How are you today, bud? I'm well. I'm well. I uh, just finished my uh, weekly massage, so I'm feeling great. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I'm sure you guys uh, need them to get through these seasons here. All right, we'll talk about your teams, your games, but we got to start at Rutgers. They had a tough one on Saturday against Michigan State. We, we kind of knew it was going to be a tough one. That's a tough spot to go into, but a lot of the fans are really down because, you know, the Big Ten losses they've had, you know, a few of them have been by really big margins. Does that kind of stuff matter, uh, you know, when you're moving through a season? Is it tough to get back up after a, a big loss like that, or is it almost easier – than losing a tough game by a field goal or, or a close game? You know, so it, it, it's different. You know, uh, sometimes it can be easier. Sometimes it can be more difficult. Uh, you hate to have to uh, go through that type of embarrassment, not even really uh, being competitive in a, a really lopsided uh, loss. But at the same time, uh, you knew from probably the beginning of the third quarter that we really didn't have a shot to win that game. So in a sense, mentally, you've already put it behind you and, I think the team realizes the impact of winning uh, the seventh game that they can have on their season and what bowl game they go to. So I think they'll be prepared and they'll be motivated and ready to go. Yeah, I, I think it's like Jason said, you know, it doesn't really matter sometimes how you lose. Uh, it's all about having an understanding of what you're playing for next. Um, I know for us even, you know, in our season we took a big loss at Kansas City but understood it was still early in the season. We had a lot left to play for, so. Uh, they have to realize, you know, it's better to have a seven-win season that leads into an eight-win season in a bowl game than, to, you know, just have a seven-win season. So it's all up to those seniors. Those guys are playing uh, their last, you know, games. And I think you always remember your senior year or every year in college. So it's important for them to step up right now and give the leadership to the team. What do you guys think it's going to take for Rutgers to find enough, uh, you know, whether it be talent, whether it be coaching scheme, to really compete in these games against these ranked Big Ten teams? I mean, it's a big jump to go from where they were to the Big Ten. And, I mean, some of these Big Ten teams, you know, uh, Michigan was number, Michigan State was number 11 in the country. That's a big jump from where they have been the last few seasons. Yeah, exactly. And I think it takes – it's a little bit of a process, you know. Uh, you move into a bigger conference. Uh, obviously, you were doing something right in your conference before, but – it also takes time to develop uh, not only uh, the coaching, the coaching staff getting used to that type of competition and uh, also getting used to the tendencies and what the teams like to do, but in addition, also helping with your recruiting. You know, uh, now being in the Big Ten, going against, like you said, the Michigan State to a ranked 11th in the country, the Nebraska's, Wisconsin's, you're going to attract now bigger recruits. And hopefully, you know, with this jump, we can get more of the in-state kids in Jersey. And even in the tri-state, you know, to stay right here at home and, uh, have the ability for their families to come watch them, and they can get that same type of competition uh, right there in their backyard. Yeah, and I think also you you have you need time to start recruiting and your team start to develop into a Big Ten school. You know, you're in a new conference where, you know, size is different, schemes are different. You know, our team was really built on, and the Big East built on speed and you know, a lot of times we had a lot of undersized guys that were had good speed and quickness and was able to make plays. But, you know, sometimes you got to shift how you recruit and what you want your team's, you know, style and signature to be in that conference. So um, it takes time, but I think they have the right pieces there. Um, you know, you just got to develop it. You know, you mentioned recruiting and getting these uh, tri-state kids, New Jersey kids to come. The Michigan State coach after the game had an interesting quote, was talking about kind of using uh, the game they just had against Rutgers when they go recruiting in New Jersey, saying, you know, come over here, we just beat those guys, and it beat them up pretty good. When you guys were being recruited, did that stuff matter to you? Did coaches kind of use that kind of stuff, like, come to our school, we beat up this school? Yeah, without a doubt they do. You know, uh, you do whatever you can do to get an edge on recruiting. You know, you're trying to persuade young guys – 18 years old to come to your school, you know, whether it's uniforms or the, the nice equipment room when you go on your visits, uh, whatever they can do. But uh, I remember coming out talking to uh, Coach Chiano, and uh, his biggest thing was building tradition. You know, at Rutgers, it hasn't been a historically good football team and haven't been able to uh, win a national championship or anything like that, although we did beat Princeton in the first ever game. So I tell people that was the national championship that year, so we actually won the first one. But, you know, being the first to do something was big for us at Rutgers. You know, 
being able to start your own tradition. And uh, for anybody that goes, whenever they win the Big Ten, it'll be the first time in school history that they win the Big Ten. So you'll be setting milestones that have never been reached. Yeah, I agree with them. Uh, I think, you know, it's tough. You know, when you're young, you hear, you know, coaches tell you how they beat the other schools. But I think sometimes you got to look past that and, and look to see how you fit in at a school and what benefits you the most. So uh, I'm sure Michigan State will use that along with the, the other losses uh, we took this year. But, I mean, I'm sure we'll also go into some kid's house and tell them, hey, we beat Michigan at home. And, and you know, we, we should have really beat Penn State at home too. So uh, even though I think they, you know, it's possible you might lose some to Michigan State or Ohio State that beat you. But, you know, I think there's some local kids that will see that atmosphere you know, of that Michigan game and that Penn State game at home, you know, in a stadium that doesn't hold 110, 100,000 uh, that other schools hold in the Big Ten. But, you know, you I don't really feel like the other schools have the atmosphere we have at Rutgers when you see those top schools come in. And it's not just the student section. It's everyone in New Jersey at that game rooting for an upset. So, uh, you know, I think that's what kind of sold me when I wanted to go to Rutgers. It was – you know, that atmosphere, and I hope that, that brings some kids in. And it was the only D1 they offer, but we won't yeah, get besides the point. We have a big game this weekend, guys. Maryland, that last regular season game for Rutgers, trying to get to that seventh win you guys mentioned. How important is this one to finish strong, to get that seventh win? And then, you know, Maryland, they're also trying to get, you know, their recruiting footprint in the Big Ten, too, and they're both the two new teams here, kind of the two new kids on the block that are linked together now in the Big Ten. Yeah, that'll be huge. You know, we can win this seventh one and get some momentum going into the bowl practice and leading up to the bowl game. It will be big. And like you said, new kids on the block. We're both new in the conference. There's people probably saying we don't deserve to be there, this, that, and the third. But if we can go uh, and beat Maryland uh, in the last game, last regular season game for those seniors and, you know, everybody that's been a part of it, I think that'll be huge uh, for the school. And it marks our seventh win in our first year in the Big Ten. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, like Jay said, with the seventh win, that's going to be huge for the season. But, you know, what you hinted at, you know, in recruiting, that's huge. You know, uh, since I've been at Rutgers, I don't think we've had a bunch of kids from that area, you know, the DMV area. But, you know, being able to get some kids from there as you, you know, play against better competition, I think the more diverse the team could be having kids, you know, wanting to come to the school from all different areas uh, will make the team better. And Maryland's close enough uh that kids can't go there and still almost play at home, kind of. So uh, this is a big win. And, you know, I like when we play Maryland because it was always kind of the Nike versus Under Armour game because uh, Maryland's a school that gets a lot of good product from Under Armour. So uh, those guys have to go and show out. And, you know, I think it's a game they can win, and I think they need to understand that and, and go out there and play to it. We're talking to Jason McCourty, Devin McCourty, former Rutgers stars, now both in the NFL. And, guys, week 13 coming up here in the NFL, already 12 weeks in. Uh, back, Let's look back a little bit to your games from this past Sunday. Uh, Jason, you guys had a tough one in Philadelphia against the Eagles. We talked last week uh, about how fast-paced that Eagles offense was to watch on film. What was it like to face them on the field? I mean, they really – there was the one drive where it just seemed like they were getting the, the plays off within, you know, just 15 seconds. They were up at the line and snapping the ball. Yeah, they move really fast, you know. And the one thing I realized throughout the game, as you get a little tired, you know, I looked across the line and I was like, well, I mean, their receiver's a little tired on this drive too. We've both been in the same amount of plays. But, you know, uh, when you look at the score, you, you hate to make the comment, but we were well prepared uh, for the fast-paced uh, offense. Now, lining up and being able to execute what we uh, had in our game plan and get the job done, we weren't able to do. But uh, when they got to the line of scrimmage, we were sitting there waiting with our play in hand and guys lined up. Uh, we just did a poor job of tackling and making plays when it came down to it. But uh, the speed of their offense is different. You know, you don't you don't face that every Sunday in the league. And you know, if you when you go against that, you got to be able to get off the field on third down and sustain some drives on offense. When you don't do that, they end up running 90 plays, and it's not a good day for the team. Hey, Jay, we're, we're waiting we're waiting to come in here one week and say it wasn't a tough one for you guys. Can can you guys make that happen one of these weeks? Hey, that's the plan. They're trying. On the other hand, Devin, you guys are just rolling along here. I mean, what has been the difference between for you guys since that Chiefs game? You alluded to it earlier where you guys really took a beating on Monday Night Football. There were some questions about this team this year. And then really since the end of September, early October, 
uh, you have been, your team has been probably been the best in the AFC. What's been the difference? What happened there? Uh, nothing happened, really. I mean, I think for us, our focus and our goal is each week starting again from zero, uh, understanding that once we finish a game, win or loss is over, and it's time to move on. It's kind of like what you just said, with dealing with the records in the Michigan State game. You know, once that's over, it's time to put it to bed. You know, we did that yesterday, and now, you know, there's not one guy in the organization that's not on the Green Bay. So uh, I think that's been the key for us and you know, moving on, getting our game plan, and then it's, you know, all 11 guys on both sides of the ball and the special teams uh, while we're out there on the field executing our game plan. I think it's like Jay said. I feel like every week you go out there and you play in the NFL, every team's prepared. You know, everyone has good coaches, but it's all about how you execute. So uh, that's one of our goals each week is to go out there and execute whatever our plan is. Jason, you guys facing the Texans coming up this Sunday, a division team. Uh, are you uh, ready? Are you, have you thought all, uh, any about if uh, J.J. Watt lines up at wide receiver? Are you going to cover him? How, what's that going to be like? No, I haven't actually I haven't put that in my uh, game plan yet, but I'm more concerned about Andre Johnson lining up at receiver than J.J. Watt. But, yeah, you know, a division opponent, team that we know we played one time uh, already. So uh, this time we're heading to Houston, and it'll be big for us to try to, you know, get a win. We have a, a however many games left in the season, and, you know, uh, it hasn't gone the way we want it to go. But if we can salvage out the rest of it and try to win uh, all of these games, uh, it'll be it'll be big just leading into the off season. So, you know, momentum's good in the locker room. Guys are still upbeat. So, yeah, uh, hopefully J.J. Watt is uh, only lined up on defense, and we won't have to worry about going against him uh, when we're on the field. Devin, you're probably in the game of the week again this week, going to Green Bay to play the Packers. They have been rolling really just like you guys have. And when you watch Aaron Rodgers on tape and you get ready for him, I mean, what's the biggest challenge there? Well, to me, I, I don't think there's a more accurate quarterback in the league. And, I mean, your quarterback there in New England is pretty accurate too. But, I mean, just the way Rodgers puts the ball wherever he wants, uh, how do you how do you kind of try to slow him down? Uh, I think what's tough about him is he's probably, you know, the most complete, you know, quarterback uh, in the game as far as, you know, he can drop back and stay in the pocket and, and be accurate all over the field, deep throws, short throws. But then, the, you know, there's a lot of times where everyone's covered and he scrambles for 15 to 20 yards. So uh, it's tough when you play a, a pocket-style quarterback who can run, you know, and uh, you watch him, especially at home. I mean, they're, they're a different animal at home. and um, The numbers are ridiculous. I think, you know, they've outscored opponents like 130, 160-something. So I think nine points in the first half in the last couple home games they played. So uh, it's going to be tough for us. It's only going to be the 50-something, 53 guys we take with us there. Um, I'm sure we won't see much white, blue, or red in the stands. So um, I think it's going to be good for us, though. It'll be another tough task. And, you know, to me, when you want to be a good football team, a great football team in this league, you got to go on the road and play in tough games. And this will be, you know, probably one of our toughest challenges, you know, if not the toughest uh, that we face all year. Have either of you guys played at Lambeau Field yet? Everyone that goes there talks about, you know, how stor historic that place is and how cool it is to play there. I know, obviously, both of you guys in the AFC, so you only would go there, uh, you know, once every eight years uh, to play the Packers. Have either of you, Jason, have you played in Lambeau yet? Two years ago, uh, in December, at the end of the season of a, of a not-so-great year, uh, and it wasn't too pretty for us, but uh, I remember going on a visit there coming out uh, of college, and it is an awesome place, you know, to see the Lombardi trophies they have there and uh, everything that goes along with it. It's more like an experience when you go visit uh, the stadium and the facility. So it is an, an awesome place. And, you know, when you step out on the field, you can tell and uh, how the fans are and the whole atmosphere. Like Dev said, you know, as an opposing team, those are one of the stadiums you love to go play in because – everybody there is, hates you and they all want to see you lose and like he said you only have the guys that you got on the plane and on the buses with so that makes for a great uh, experience when you get the chance to play them. Devin will you give yourself a chance to kind of take in Lambeau Field or will you be too focused on trying to get ready to play a game? Uh, no I always try to you know take in the experience it was similar when we went to Chicago uh, we played at Soldiers Field and you know Bill kind of gave us a whole history lesson you know on that stadium so um, you know, I, I'm always one of the first guys to get to the state. I'm on the first bus, so uh, by the time I get there, I'll probably still have about three hours till game time, so you'll get a chance to take it in, and, you know, I think lucky for us, we'll get to play on Lambeau in the cold, 
uh, Patriots versus Packers. I, I feel like that's the way it's supposed to be. All right, a couple more for you guys. I'll get a Rutgers prediction before we go, but I have to ask you about Odell Beckham Jr.'s catch on Sunday Night Football. Uh, did you guys see it live? What did you think when you saw it? I mean, it's been the talk of you know every NFL fan the past couple of days. I, I actually I saw it live. Um, you know, one thing I can say is you just hope you're not the DB in that picture because it wasn't it wasn't much. Uh, I think it was Carr. It wasn't much he can do. I mean, he, we always talk about if you can make a guy go up and try to make a one-handed catch, you know, you're playing pretty good coverage. And you know, he laid backwards and, and reached back and grabbed it, grabbed it, and you know, I, I think he's probably one of the young players in this league that has showed a lot of promise this year, and uh, it's going to be tough for teams going against him in the future. Yeah, it was an amazing catch. I didn't see a lot. Sunday nights are typically when I catch up on my Homeland episodes, so I kind of leave football alone for a little while and hang out with the fam. But uh, as soon as I went on social media, uh, I saw it everywhere. And uh, I guess was more impressive, uh, we had a conversation today with one of my equipment managers, was it more luck or more skill? And I guess the most impressive thing is watching him do it in warm-ups and uh, how they say he does it all the time. We have a few guys on our team who uh, – practice one hand catches just kind of from all over their body and just being able to snag it. So it is it is quite impressive to make a catch with three fingers. Now Jason, you're gonna play the Giants in a couple weeks here and you're probably gonna go up against uh, Mr. Beckham a couple times in that game. Uh, how are you gonna cover him? Just do your thing, try to make him make those one hand catches? Yeah, without a doubt, hopefully uh, you can push him out of bounds and he can uh, make an incredible incomplete uh, uh, catch. So uh, yeah, he's he's played awesome, you know, and then when uh, unfortunate thing for the Giants is Victor Cruz went down with an injury, but man, he stepped up and he's really shown uh, what they have in the future. So you know, whenever you have a player like that uh, who's that who's that good and uh, and is able to make plays like that, you just enjoy the opportunity to go out there and compete against them. And you know, you prepare all week and you go out there on Sunday and you you just go out there and have fun and you try to do the best you can do to help your team get a win. All right, last one for you guys for this week, Maryland. Rutgers last Big Ten regular season game. I always get a prediction from you guys. Is Rutgers going to end the season, the regular season, with their seventh win and go to a, a nice bowl game? What you got, Dev? Is, is, is this one home or away? This one is away. It's down in College Park. Um, I know Maryland has a pretty explosive offense. Um, I'm going I'm going to go 35 35-38 Rutgers. Okay, I was going to say 27-24 Rutgers. Of course, Rutgers gets the win. It's just a matter of what the score is going to be. Yeah, right, right, of course. So a field goal game from both of you guys. It should be fun this weekend watching them. Good luck to both you guys, uh, Devin against Aaron Rodgers and uh, Jason against uh, the Houston Texans. Guys, appreciate a few minutes here, and uh, happy Thanksgiving to you guys and your families. Oh, same to you. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for watching on NJ.com.